This week, we were privileged to witness Governor Cooper sign the Medicaid expansion bill into law. Contingent upon a budget passing, of course, but still a huge feat nonetheless. We also saw the Senate override the governor's veto on guns, rights, and permitting. And speaking of the budget, the House released its highly anticipated budget for the 2023 biennium Wednesday. Below, you'll find some notable line items, but make sure to check out today's email as it'll have a link in it that includes our full budget analysis. So House Bill 259, the proposed House budget contains several important NC child legislative priorities. A child care subsidy reimbursement rate increase is in the budget, y'all. It would allocate $24 million in recurring funds to increase the state's child care subsidy reimbursement rates to the 2021 rate. The budget did not create a child care subsidy reimbursement rate statewide floor, but in terms of suicide prevention and children's mental health, the budget does make several investments, including recurring funding for cyberbullying and suicide prevention programs, uh, $10 million in non-recurring funds for child and adolescent mental health facility planning, and a whole lot of money each year of the biennium to hire 120 new school support personnel, which is defined in the budget as school nurses, counselors, or psychologists. While the budget does not make school lunches free, it does provide $7.8 million in non-recurring funds for the fiscal year of 2023 through 24 to reduce school lunch debt and co-pays. Then last minute yesterday, y'all, in the House Appropriations Committee, which was taking up the budget, we saw two bills that we'd been tracking uh, get added as amendments. So that was Senate Bill 293, which would establish a tri-share child care pilot program to increase access to high-quality, affordable child care, with a third being paid by the state, a third being paid by the eligible employee, and a third being paid by the participating employer. We also saw House Bill 43 get transferred into an amendment, which would create a pilot program in which full-time child care teachers would automatically be eligible for early childhood education child care subsidies for their children who are aged eight weeks to five years old. The bill also had a fiscal note of $10 million non-recurring to create the program. The House will vote on the budget next week, and then the Senate is expected to release their budget. Subsequently, representatives from both chambers will convene in what is called a conference committee. And this is where they hash out the discrepancies in their respective budget language bills um, and negotiate and ultimately agree upon compromise language that will go into the final version of the bill. But there are also several bills moving um, outside of the budget this week. Of course, we already mentioned House Bill 76, the bill uh, that would expand Medicaid. It was signed into law Monday, March 27th by Governor Cooper and would expand Medicaid for adults up to 138% of the federal poverty level. So we are again over the moon and we want to thank legislators and legislative leadership and staff for moving on this life-saving legislation. We also saw House Bill 494, Strong Minds Pilot Program. And this bill was filed Tuesday and it would establish a pilot program to support the mental health of early childhood caregivers. There is a $280,000 non-recurring appropriation, which would be equally split amongst the pilot sites. And the pilot sites would be the Wake County Smart Start, and the Richmond County Partnership for Children. The bill passed its first reading Wednesday, March 29th, and has been assigned to the House Appropriations Committee. 
House Bill 253, Prevent Students from Harm Act, is a bipartisan legislation that would update existing state law related to bullying prevention and health education at school. The bill adds language related to preventing harassment and bullying and character education. The bill adds qualified nonprofits to a list of personnel who can deliver educational programs at school to prevent child sex abuse and child trafficking. Finally, it adds two topics to the list of required health education programs in public schools, prevention of child sex abuse and trafficking and prevention of suicide, abuse, and neglect. The bill successfully passed the House Education K-12 Committee Tuesday, and it now heads to the House Rules and Operations Committee for further review. House Bill 509, a bill with both Democratic and Republican sponsors, seeks more than $3 million in non-recurring funding to pay off student mill debt. This bill awaits its first hearing. House Bill 382, Registered Nurses and Schools, is also a bipartisan bill that would allow registered nurses with at least two years experience in either hospital or health clinic settings to be eligible to serve as a school nurse. House Bill 382 passed its second and third readings Thursday and is now headed to the Senate. You tired? I get it. I get it. But remember, y'all, you can always check our live bill tracker anytime to get legislative updates on these bills as well as the many other bills that we're monitoring. It's on our website and will be linked in the legislative update email. And as always, thank you so much for what you do for North Carolina kids and families. Now go make it a great one.